forever. Dog. Las Culturistas listeners, RuPaul's Drag Race superstars, and former Las Culturistas guests, Alaska and Willem, are hosting a blowout live performance of their hit podcast, Race Chaser. Woohoo! <laughs> and tickets are on sale right now. Folks, this is not your ho hum podcast taping. This is Race Chaser Live with Willem and Alaska. A one of a kind event that you do not want to miss. There's going to be special guests, special performances, a special pick crew. Ooh, boy. Boys, boys, boys. Drag, songs, tea spilling, and yes, live ponies. Huh? It's true. Willem is bringing literal live <laughs> ponies and so much more. Ooh, I know who this special guest is and you will not want to miss it. Race Chaser is a podcast dedicated to the discussion, dissection, and dissemination. Ooh, the 3Ds. Fun semen reference of everything RuPaul's Drag Race. The iconic queens pull back the curtain on the worldwide phenomenon and giving you a behind the scenes perspective on the show. You will not get anywhere else and now you can see it live a limited number of vip tickets will be sold that include a fan meet and greet Ooh, yes so get online right now and you know what i say i say it's the perfect holiday gift you agree bo i do matt i feel this way so (laughs) the show will take place january 11th 2019 at 8 p.m at downtown la's gorgeous stunning six 1600 seat cathedral known as the theater at Ace Hotel. So go to racechasertickets.com right now and get your tickets. Again, that's racechasertickets.com. And by the way, if you're not listening to Race Chaser, shame on you. Willem and Alaska are recapping All Stars 4, so subscribe today. You better subscribe. subscribe. Look, man. Where? Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, and look over there. Wow, is that Ooh, culture? Uh, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las Culturistas. Ding dong, Las Culturistas calling. Oh, and I follow this one under Big Day. This is a pretty big day. File under Big Day and then put it in the cabinet. Cabinet of my heart. Of your heart. Can I say something? Yes. Do you remember, do you recall, do uh-huh. you recollect when we hosted a show for our guests? Oh my goodness. And our guest gave a speech to all the performers. Yes. And then she walked away and you said, you turned to me, threw up your hands and said, She's the most cultured person I've ever seen. Oh, so our guest uh, put on this comedy show, mm-hmm. brought champagne for everybody, <sighs> poured it for everybody, had had people pass it around, gave an eloquent, eloquent toast, just so gracious, thanking us for being there. Meanwhile, Meanwhile like, we're, we're like, just what? Like, we're like, why? This is so we love inverted. This. And then, yeah, as soon as the toast ended, I turned to you. I go, I'm, I'm truly captivated, like in in a way that I haven't. Really. It's crazy that we would ever <laughs> call ourselves Las Culturistas. Ugh. Meanwhile, my culture is like I've been to Epcot. Yeah, meanwhile, <laughs> my culture is... Um, you my- guys are very sweet. I'm going to take you with me everywhere. Listen, Please. we need to come. <laughs> I think that's what this is about, is we need to join you on your world. We do, travels. we do. Yes. Um, this is... And, and, and I just remember the moment, too, when th- this moment happened where she just tweeted at us, or she followed... A, when she followed me on Twitter, I was at the dentist's office back in Colorado. And you looked down at your little phone. <laughs> I was about to get a root canal. I was so stressed. I was oh, like, this is going to be... A t- what a terrible day this oh, is going to be. Been, I've been there. <laughs> and then... But then you you just turned it all around for me with, with within a matter of seconds. I truly... I mean, that this is the power of this person and has. before Aww. we get before we get into it let's just say uh-huh. not only is this person famously the host of the emmy award-winning top chef mm. in its 16th season yes it was just insane hosted the show since season two yes all right award-winning best-selling author yes activist mm-hmm. model actress mother aclu ambassador <laughs> hello um also wait um i just want to say the the season that i got into top, into top chef was was five which was new york right mm-hmm. yes mm. and that was the that was the year that i moved to new york that was the year we started college yes and it was just her so her she like her presence is like very tied into wow. like the fabric Comforting of me for you well just me moving to new york like she was a she she was in that mythos in, in a way She's you know what i'm saying oh how nice so this is true i was part of your coming to new york you story. were you your were birth story your my, orig- origin my, story as a new yorker yes it was like well pat well padma is in new york with top chef like i gotta go and, and, and if, here we are if you don't know who we're talking about <laughs> everyone please welcome padma, padma lakshmi hi. Hi, padma. hello indeed hi. Hi. i'm so excited to be here on this rainy cold night with you and we thank you for joining us in brooklyn um, I know, I just said, where are we? <laughs> we're truly, like, Excuse where me. are, would you call this downtown Brook? It's Borham Hill. It's Borham nice. Borham Hill? It's Borham Hill. Okay. It's, it's your, your Michelle Williams's, your Anne Hathaway's, your Ethan Hawke's all sort of wander around here. Who does Matt Ethan Hawke want, and Matt and Bowen. And Matt and 
Bowen. Mm -hmm. Um, Ethan Hawk. Ethan Hawk is at uh, Brooklyn Inn, which is one of my favorite bars in the neighborhood. He's there all the time. Um, I should say. I think Anne has since moved away. (laughs) Miss Hathaway. Miss Hathaway. Mm -hmm. Although. Mr. Birbiglia, I see wandering around in his pajamas. Okay. Oh, yeah, time. that's because he's a new dad. So he's a new dad. Oh. He doesn't get out of his pajamas unless he goes on stage. Sure. And, and after that, not much. After that, not much. And even on stage, it's debatable. Yeah. But anyway, um, Padma, how how often are you splitting time between the coasts? But you're mostly, you're, are you mostly here? I'm not splitting any time between the coasts. Okay. I go to LA if I need to. Uh-huh. And then when I'm done, I come back. Great. Yeah, I, I remember see my saying, mom. I come back. If I'm working, that's fine. But yeah. I live in New York. You're a New Yorker. I'm such a New Yorker. Through yeah. and through. Through and through. Mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. It, would you say that was your favorite season of Top Chef? Then no, you can no. Say, oh, what was? <laughs> no, because I was home. Usually, you yeah. know, I have to go away to film the show, uh-huh. and I work so intensely. But at least, you know, I'm not home, so I don't have like the normal responsibilities of my house or yeah. my work or whatever. Right. And when it was in New York, I found I had all the responsibilities of when I'm home yeah. with all the responsibilities of being away on location right. together. Uh-huh. No, um, thank you. And I was just like... This is too much. It's too much. No, but I feel like as the years go by, you seem to be picking up more and more. Just, I mean, I feel like you're just, you're out there more and more in this way that is, I mean, inspiring, but also like... Truly, it like defies all sort of like career fatigue. Like I at this point feel very tired, and <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. not even like at I'm nowhere close to that level, quote unquote. And I'm I'm disgusted at myself for even speaking about myself in these terms. <laughs> but like, how how do you, so then are, has it been like what what what's been the challenge in managing all that as like things things grow and grow. Well, it is hard. You know, um, we've been on air for 16 seasons. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I also I come at it as a food writer and I'm a writer first. So Mm -hmm. I always have my writing to, you know, procrastinate against. Yeah, right. But, um, you know, it's like an old marriage. You have to keep it fresh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. It really is. And, you know, luckily we go to a different city every season, which Uh keeps the show really fresh. And I think, you know, I I have been speaking out um, a lot more as I've gotten more comfortable in life and feel secure that I've, you know, I'm able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when you're young, you're just so afraid people, Mm. it's going to not ruin your career, but like you don't want to, you want everyone to like you because you Mm -hmm. need them to like you to book you and give you work. And, you know, ours is a personality driven business. Uh uh And so you're so busy charming people. You sometimes, you know, you forget that, you have opinions or you know you have opinions, but you forget that you can express them sure. for greater good, Sure, I guess. And um, there was so much to talk about, you know, um, when I did start talking that I just was like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Wow. I mean, famously, you started the show off that we hosted for you with Fuck Louis C.K. <laughs> yes. And it killed. It was a successful yes. stand-up set right then and there. Exactly. Well, I had to, like, just do one joke yeah. because I'm not a comic and I have immense respect for stand-up comics. And so... Um, That show was amazing. And I have to tell you, it was such a fluke. Mm. And literally, like, every single person we asked, unless they were already booked or out of town, Mm -hmm, said mm -hmm. yes. Uh, And, you know, you were saying, I brought champagne. That's because we weren't paying anyone. We brought pizza and champagne just because to say thank you, you know. Um, And it was so nice that we just put it on Twitter. We didn't even put it on Instagram. And it sold out. Yeah. Yeah. Within minutes? Hours. 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 And then we had to add a second show, as you know, and everyone said yes again, who could? And, you know, it was really like the goodwill in the room was quite palpable and a really great experience for me. Because when we filmed the show, we do it largely in secret. I mean, Uh it's a whole different thing, you know, the energy. But I started in live television. Uh Uh-huh. In Italy. Yes. Um, and so I like having, I like doing live TV, but I also like having an audience, uh-huh. yeah. you know, a live audience. So you really, you really feed off of them. Totally. And it was wonderful to experience just for a second what you guys experience all the time. 
or sure. on the road or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That was a really special one though. And I will say you did nail it with the lineup. Thank because you. Because that really is like, those are all the most, those, I mean, it's crazy that they're all our friends, but it is truly the most exciting. Like Pat Regan and Catherine yeah. Cohen. I have a question. How did you find everybody? Like, how did you initially like start following everyone? Like, well, we, we I followed him because. Because ah, <laughs> of the lip sync? <laughs> oh, yeah, something? I saw something. You had posted some video uh-huh. some wacky video almost uh-huh. like lying on your side and it was a little okay. he is wacky i'm a wacky and one I, this is a while ago I, I don't even remember what you were parodying uh-huh, but uh-huh. it was so <laughs> funny uh-huh. i'm like this person is crazy <laughs> this Who person is, this? is this crazy. Person is and crazy. so it just went bing and yeah. I just, you know I, I had no clue that you guys had a podcast or that whatever you know i just yeah, thought you were yeah. funny i also follow this haitian nurse from you know <laughs> like Every now and From then I, I do these random, you Follows. know, yeah, and I just like to see, you know, <laughs> and, uh, because you just remember I started out, there was no social media, yeah, 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 you know? yeah. and it's like, I think social media has actually given me a megaphone yeah. that brown girls didn't get before the internet, uh-huh, mm, uh-huh. you know, in this country. And so for me, it was a great, um, pleasant surprise to find people who were like me out there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, gay, Asian boy, you know, <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> all these people that were my people. And it was really nice to find them. And so I just go random trolling. Yes. And, yes. <laughs> but I mean, I knew Thank Michelle God. Wolf. I, knew, I didn't yeah. know her, but I had, I had seen her right. work and a couple of the others I'd also seen some I had. And, mm-hmm. and then, um, but you know, I, obviously there are other comedians that I, I know, like I had gone to see Leslie Jones oh, yeah. around that time, who was doing stand up at Caroline's. I, you know, I love Ali Wong. Ali, um, the best. because I also think like Asian culture is such that just to just to speak up and make fun of anything uh-huh. is so antithetical to how you know, at least for women, but. Across the board, you have to be more reserved. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, it's and, the expectation in a yeah, way. Yeah. And, and so it's wonderful to just discover these people online. And mm. I, I just thought, you know, there's so many interesting people. Why do we have to mm-hmm. pick this pervert? <laughs> It's so true. I actually was just talking about it before we got here. And it's also interesting with like the whole Kevin Hart stuff. It's like, you know what? We can move on. There's a lot of other people who right. we can have. There's, right. there's all Millions these other, even. you know, yeah. interesting comics. There's this, there's that. Oh, wait, maybe we just won't have a host. How about a white man? How about this white man? How about, you know, it's like, <sighs> hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just, I, I feel like it, it's just sort of built into... <clears throat> you have a conversation about something that you have a strong feeling about and therefore it's like to drive clicks it's like well Mm -hmm. let's keep talking about this one thing that everyone's upset about or has an emotion i didn't think about it like that but yeah with like the oscar host thing now like the big story is we can't find one and so now it's like a we're all on a wild goose chase to find who's going to be the next meanwhile everyone is like me me hello it's like who are you online online uh, online campaign campaign. yeah busy phillips yeah i saw other people too millennium kroll i think they'd be amazing I feel like would you, you would you ever do it? I feel like you would be great. Uh, I, I I don't think I would start out that big. You know what I'm <laughs> she just hosted two shows at the Bell House. Yeah, right, that, you're right, you're I, right. I'm feeling pretty good <laughs> with that. I want to build. Yes. But, I mean, there's so many people that are. I think Wanda Sykes would be amazing. Wouldn't that be she great? Be, yeah, she's so funny. She's so and good. you never even hear her name discussed. No, no. you know the first White House correspondence dinner. Of Obama's, uh-huh. I went to that dinner, and Wanda Sykes was doing the yes. roast, and she was amazing. Uh-huh, Probably killed. Uh-huh. Yeah, she killed. She yeah. killed. I thought I was gonna pee in my pants. Oh yeah. my god! And I wasn't wearing very much, but you know. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank God you kept it together. <laughs> you, but you didn't. You wore pants at least. No, I, don't I even didn't. Know. I'm kidding. No, <laughs> I didn't. You know what? It's, it's a fashion embarrassing. Event. No I'm pants. sorry yes. I even brought up my wardrobe because that was my <laughs> biggest. Regret. It was a wardrobe malfunction. Oh, no. Hey. The worst place. But we, like, all, we all have them. When well, you're a style I just icon, was wearing that happens. this chiffon gown, which uh-huh. was really beautiful. And it was two layers of burgundy. And, you know, I just had my little flesh colored orthopedic thong on underneath <laughs> so nothing would show. And, like, everything showed because the no. lights. Right, yeah. we forget yeah. about that. But luckily, lights. Natalie Portman also had a wardrobe malfunction. She was sitting at the table <laughs> and her nipple came out. So I was like, okay. Later, <laughs> Later, I saw in the paper 
And I was like, oh, oh my no. God. Those damn all, papers. You know, in that light, there it's never like at Pacha at five in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in Ibiza, you know, in the 90s when in everybody's, you know, like Everyone no one cares. It has to be it. like at the White House. Uh, yeah, a scandal. Yeah. Sure. I mean, thank God that yeah. Natalie Portman didn't have it together. Oh my God. <laughs> I love Natalie so much. <laughs> do you know her? Yes, I do. She, <sighs> um, she came to Top Chef when we were in Vegas. Oh. And and, you know, I I think the Vegas season was the hardest for me just because of the heat. We were there it's crazy. in the August, and oh. I don't know. I mean, it was horrible. But she made it better. I'm not a gambler, so uh-huh. yeah, you know, I don't I don't care. Yeah, you know, I see I see chips going. I'm like, those could be a pair of Louboutins right there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, what a waste. Truly, I, there's there's both times I've been pieces. to Vegas, I've performed there, so they've been paying me to go there. And one time I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <sighs> Um, but um, it's clearly not you. <laughs> it was he crazy. Want well, to. the they thing film is, in Vegas. They film in Vegas, so it was kind of like it I mean, makes sense though it, a little bit. It, they used to film in like Connecticut or something. Really? So it was very not easy to LA? get to. No, no, they they've never shot in LA. It's always been New York, and then it was Connecticut, mm-hmm. and then I now they shoot in Vegas, and so I went out there, and so I did make a little bit of money on the show. Okay, good. But it was so it was kind of like oh, I can feel good about like rolling a pair of dice I don't know what I'm doing with but like we'll see how it happens and I lost money but it, <laughs> in the grand scheme I was up yeah but I would good. never go like voluntarily even. No. yeah well we were shooting there because I think a lot of chefs have big restaurants there and it yeah. made sense and um, Natalie came up from LA and she was just so funny great um, she seems funny to me she's really really funny I've known her a little bit for a really long time yeah. you know since she did like V, I want to say V for Vendetta. Yeah, or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Love V for Vendetta. Um, and I'm a huge fan of hers. Yeah. You know, I, I, I see, this is scary. Well, maybe not scary, but when I see, when I'm hanging out with my daughter, Krishna, and we're walking like in the city, in the village, or uh-huh. you know, in the East Village or something, like I feel like I'm with Natalie Portman and <laughs> I'm Jean Reno. Uh, you think, you think Krishna, <laughs> you think Krishna is Natalie? has Natalie Portman vibes? Yes. Uh, wow. Wow. Except she has really long hair. To uh, me, bald, in that yeah. sense, in her like, <laughs> I'm grown up. Yes. Sense like she, she's edgy. Like, it's true. Natalie wow. Portman has always carried herself as if she was in her mid thirties. Are you? And that's to, that's to the best. I mean in that the in the best way. way. In the best yes. way. Yeah. Now, are you are you trying to raise Krishna to become a certain way to become a Natalie Portman? No, for no, okay. I can't. I couldn't do that if I tried. But no, <laughs> to become I'm, an activist, a political activist. I mean, why not? Uh, she's very active. Krishna, oh yeah, already. She um, she complained about not having enough lunchtime, <gasps> and she ran for student council, <gasps> and and she got it from her class, and Hell yeah. she ran on a platform of, you know, we don't have enough time for lunch, and we need more chicken nuggets. I was like, you don't even eat chicken nuggets at home. <laughs> She's like, that's why I need them more at school. Wow. Yeah, well, there you go. She's able to code switch. She, she knows. Whole, she's a code switcher. She's a code, code switcher. Brain. So yeah, I, she, I, she's great. She's yeah. going to be awesome. What does she want to do? Because last I saw an interview where you, you said she had pop star aspirations. Still, 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 still going I, strong. You think? I think we can make it happen. And we, as in, we together, we will manage her. As in the two of us. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. after I will play you a song on my iPhone. I can't play it on air because no, no, no. Of she'll copyright get mad issues. at me. Yeah, yeah, she'll be like, "What the hell, man? We haven't copyrighted that shit." <laughs> Mom, you're such I'm an not amateur. making no dollar from yeah. this. <laughs> What wow. the heck? And Kri- I love that. I think Krishna can just be a mononym. One name, Krishna. known anonymously as Krishna. Krishna. Yeah. And yeah. then and then you you have some divine aspect to it. Yes. You have, you have a God's name in that. Yeah. You have a like accessible name for everyone to pronounce all yes. over the world yeah. Yeah. in any language. I think I think this is now all she has to do is sing well. <laughs> No, Not she necessarily. Sing well. She sings incredibly well. Speaking but. of speaking of uh, Natalie Portman and pop star, that you, have you heard of Vox Lux? The new I'm movie Vox Lux. I'm dying to see it. I'm dying to okay. go to it. Oh it looks my god! Insane. Do you think it'll come? Is it out? I think I it's out. I think it's out. Yeah. She's doing press actually, so it yes. must be out soon. I can't I think it's wait. Out. Is I, it rated R? I I think it is because okay, the so subject matter is pretty yes. is pretty very thick. dark, very dark. Like it's. Did you hear what it's about? It's she survives. She's a, a young Lots girl star. who survives a school shooting, and so then at the memorial for her friends uh-huh. who passed, she performs a song that she wrote, and then they make her a pop star. And and this video from the memorial goes viral. Yeah, and then she becomes. So she becomes. It's it's a movie that I think it's really it's interesting. A it's definitely a comment. 
the yeah. intersection of like tra- tragedy with like mm-hmm. you know like the parkland exactly very that and sort of yeah and I think like then it flashes forward many years and Natalie Portman is playing the adult version and she's this sort of like you know pop star we recognize right that's like crazy and has been kind of driven nuts by the fact that like not only is this expectation right. of being a pop star but also how she got famous sort right. of like and the, and the ghosts figuratively and you know right like, yeah and yeah. then yeah. And, uh, then like later on there's like another tragedy that happens that it's clear that they were mimicking the one from when she was young it just sounds like a fascinating I movie I can't wait I saw a clip of it because she was on yeah. Ellen um mm-hmm. The episode I was on, and I was like, I have to see this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love all her movies. I do. T- I'm a huge fan. Love her. I've and we loved were, her. we actually we were in college when when Black Swan came out. <gasps> right, and that's one of my favorites. I did an homage to Black Swan. This, yeah, that's Halloween. This you Halloween. and Krishna. I do remember. Well, Krishna was homaging Angelina Jolie as. Um, Lara Maleficent. Oh, Maleficent. Oh, Maleficent. 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 Maleficent is much Lara better Croft. than Lara Croft. I don't know. Girl, I let you go into the pop star. star. And Padma told me this in person at the Bell House show too and I forgot already. I'm no, terrible. No, but I mean, you can't see pictures on this podcast, but if you go on my Instagram, <laughs> you can see pictures and yes. videos. We had so much fun. We were just walking around Soho like, yes. yeah, we know. We look better than you bitches. Yeah. Wait. Did people recognize you in costume? Um, well, yes. When, uh, people actually recognize my voice. It's really oh, funny. Wow. Well, that's wow. interesting. Um, like, I'll be at a restaurant, and then the person with their back to me be like, I heard your voice, and <laughs> I thought that was yours. It's because I'm only saying A words, vocal but... signature wow. timbre. That's the timbre. It's that's the timbre? Across. Yeah. You also, do have a fantastic voice. Thank you. And we were discussing before <laughs> before the before we went on that uh, W Magazine does these celebrity oh, ASMR yeah, yeah. videos. Padman would be... Fantastic. She'd be good. And uh, you can't see the you can't see the photos of uh, her and Krishna dressed up on Halloween. Podcast but famously not a visual medium. Are, but, but we the, say well, that we they say are. They are, but they're not. Um, okay, here's the thing. Let's talk about Matt for a second. You can see him on my Instagram. Yes, yes, yes. Check out Padma's Check Instagram. Check out at Padma Lakshmi. Yes. I <laughs> do. You. I wanted to thank you for the plug. I want to talk about. Let's just dig into Matt for a second. Don't you point your finger? No, at no, me. no. Because. <laughs> We were, I know where this is going. Padma was very playfully ribbing about how you, you know, she, she was like, one of you doesn't read. And we were like, it's Matt. She knew that going in. But I feel like Matt is able to break down any piece of art in, in a way that is. Art, really? Well, she, I, st- I have, I know what I'm talking art? about. Did you study Well, art? I was a dramatic writing major. And yeah. so oh. like, I am also, I also acted and, or act and, you know, I do lots of different things. But I, I, okay. I but you, I think you are able to analyze and break you're able to give the cliff's notes ver- version of anything i think better than most people and i think that you're robbing yourself and other people uh by not reading more this is a runaway train i do <laughs> read i just don't read all the time but I, you know we now, have padma lakshmi out here thinking i don't read well no you know you can also i read very slowly me too mm-hmm. i really do and i have started listening to books on audible and mm-hmm. on pot whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. audiobooks and I love them. I love them so much. And I, you know, when I was um, and living in LA and auditioning as an actress, I would mm-hmm. be in the car all the time. And yeah. there was this place that was like a video rental um, when we had VHS yes. and we rented them. We went to places mm-hmm. and got them and coming back and then gave them back in a timely fashion. Wow. Right, like you um, did. <laughs> but there was like talking book world. Yeah. And you could get these boxes of like Jeremy Irons narrating uh-huh. Lolita. Wow. Yeah, creepy. Yeah, and you, <laughs> listen to this in the, you listened to this in the 90s? I mean, yes, yeah, when yeah. you were... In the late 90s or late the aughts. 90s. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, um, I, I think you should start there. I'm going to I'm going to do audiobooks and I would love especially because a lot of the books that I enjoy reading are memoirs, you know, memoirs yeah. and I love to hear someone read their own memoir. like I would love to read your book um, or hear it or, uh, that's what I'm saying yes. Ab- absorb the book absorb. in whatever way that I can absorb, absorb. I'm trying to th- you know what it is Padma I'm very sensitive mm-hmm. and so the last book I tried to read was A Little Life do you know a little life? Hanya I've Yanagihara. heard of it. Yeah. Hanya I... Yanagihara's last book, uh-huh. and it's kind of about like it's sort of like a coming of age. It doesn't take place in any specific time, but it's about um, uh, we're, are they gay? The, I think it's the nineties. Um, a couple of them are are gay. It's a group of friends, and one of them has like a, sort of like a debilitating um chronic pain, and it's just a really emotional book. And I realize like. As I've gotten older, I've gotten much more sensitive where mm-hmm. things affect me. And so, like, when the book got a little thick, I had to put it away because it was driving me, like... Really? I'm very sensitive. 
And I'm not mm. saying that stopped me from reading. Yeah. Is but it that was sad, the last book that I book? So sad. Very sad. Okay, I'm looking for something sad to read. <laughs> Bro, you should read this. A little <laughs> no, I'm serious, though. I, I, this is maybe TMI, but I don't care. I, <laughs> I have this massage therapist slash healer come uh-huh. to me. My yeah. normal massage therapist had hand surgery. Anyway, oh, so, wow. um, and I have a little back thing. So anyway, after she finished, she said, I think you have a lot of sadness to get out of oh, you. Oh, my God. And I said... Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> and so uh, she was saying, if you can't, you know, get it out, uh-huh. you could just go watch a, you know, sad movie or something. Huh. And I went to watch at 10 a.m. the Julia Roberts movie, <gasps> Ben is Back. Ben is back. I, I wanted to bring this up. How was it? It's, oh. it's what you think it is, you oh know. My God. It is really heartbreaking. And they both give great performances. I love her. And I don't want to spoil the ending, but. I'll just say that it's it's not a good ending. Like it, uh, not as in anything. Sure, it, it's just like it just stops. Yeah, and you're like, no, uh-huh. I want to know what happened. Right, no. because the, the I mean the reality. I kind of you know, and that's frustrating from like a narrative standpoint because mm-hmm. you're like, oh man, give me this catharsis of knowing what happens, good or bad. But also, I kind of like that kind of comment in a movie like that because that is something that families all across our country, it's, it's a true oh epidemic my God, right now. Yeah. And they're going through it right now. And it does end with an ellipsis. Yeah. So I do kind of love that. Do you know what Ben is Back is about? I vaguely. So Lucas had just plays Julia Roberts' son, son. And he has been in uh, drug rehab. You, I was going to say. And, yeah. um, and he gets hooked on drugs as a teenager, like 14. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we learn that in the movie. And so he's done everything. He's dealt. He's like broken into his own mother's house. Sure, and sure. The neighbor's houses. And uh-huh. I think... You know he it's he's gone deep and so like the whole community knows he's an addict and mm-hmm. and it's a rampant problem because throughout the movie you meet other people who you know were just throwing a frisbee in a cul-de-sac a sure, few years sure. ago and now yeah. they're like these you know heroin addicts and it's really dark yeah did not shed a tear though really i oh, didn't so it was Are just a in general? General? i am i'm normally <laughs> sad really? so maybe she's on to something i don't know like i just felt like i really wanted to it's why i went to go see the movie <laughs> <laughs> so you have a good cry and like yeah. leave it behind but no so i just you know maybe it's because it's like not melodramatic. Sure. It was very realistic. It was you know? super slice of life. That's and I like that. I mean, I like you know. Did you cry at a Star is Born? I cried more at a Star is Born. Yeah, but that's that was melodrama. Yeah, it was. I mean, I kind of. I mean, it's such. <sighs> the subject is fraught for me because mm-hmm. you know I was in a movie with a. a a, pop, a pop star, star. girlfriend we has know has the same story yes, right why yes. do they I same mean, ending if Lady Gaga wanted to be in a movie right just let her be in a movie as you saw she's a good actor right right yeah. I think she did a great job it I was, agree with you you know very nice and kind of un embroidered um, yes you yes, know yeah. and and that was great and you also got to see the beauty of her voice a cappella, mm. and really understand that you know under all those meat dresses there is this incredible talent yes mm-hmm. absolutely and it turned it turns out she's a great actor too and for the first for the first part of the movie jeff bridges's way of speaking really was distracting for me because oh, oh, wait, wait. I was like, why is he speaking wait, like so- that tall guy with the white <laughs> hair who always plays the character actor in a Western or a Tommy yes. Lee Jones movie? And yes. then he comes on and I'm like, oh, he's playing his brother. Yeah, so- yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, yes. So Bradley Cooper as Jackson Maine, a.k.a. Jeff Bridges. Is doing, is doing a Jeff Bridges basically. Is, but, I mean, based, it, why wasn't Jeff Bridges in it? That was Jeff Bridges in Crazy was- Heart. Did you it, see Crazy it is Heart? Crazy Heart. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and so it's ba- so uh, it's it's, it's very that. Yeah. And it, I had the same questions too. And also the line in the script where it was like, "You stole my voice." I was like, "Do we need this?" It's so etc. Right. But you are one hundred percent dead on. The ending of Glitter. That is the ending of Stars Born. Yeah. They're the same. It's the same story. Because the ending of Stars Born is just her basically doing a Whitney Mariah moment, like literally. It's getting... a Whitney Mariah song so, for sure. I feel like you've always had a sense of humor about glitter, but is this is it still a thing where you are you are a, you're you're watching other media and you are sort of still sort of seeing things through that lens of like oh well I was I was in a version of this and like does that how does that affect like the viewing affect experience? Me at all. Great, okay. It doesn't affect me at all. I mean, you know, I think in defense of glitter, like there 
you know, it came out 10 days after 9-11. Right, yeah. right. And, and the soundtrack very, came out the day of. That's right. Yeah. And it was a really, you know, light, popcorny movie. Yes. You know, do I think it would have been considered Citizen Kane anyway? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, whatever. It wasn't, you know, the worst thing out there. But No. Um, but I do think that, you know, when when an, when a performer who has reached a you know, height of, say, Mariah or Gaga, mm. you know, wants to get into movies, like, I think we should be a little more creative about what they how do. we utilize mm -hmm, them because mm -hmm. I thought the movie was lovely. I yeah. thought, you know, they both gave great performances. Um, I just wanted to see more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that. You knew what was going to happen. You did. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very sort of mythic sort of thing where it's like everyone knows this story so well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it does sort of. We've talked it's about this. It's an archetype, long. right? It's yes. like, yeah, totally. You know, it's a version of, you know, it, it, there's that myth, then mm -hmm. there's the pretty woman myth of someday my prince will come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it's. Yeah. So you liked Ben is Back, despite like. I really liked yeah. it. I wish <laughs> you wish, wish it was cry, sodder, you sadder and darker. Yeah. Sodder. Sodder. Sodder and <laughs> darker. Is, I know that's odd to say. I was no, going I in it. with a certain intention. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Destroy me, film. Yeah. Um, it, it takes yeah. a specific kind of film. To, I'm not a crier, and it takes a very specific kind of I'm a crier. sentimentality to get com. this. Com. I mean, I remember crying in Out of Africa. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. Yeah. Annie Merrill will do it. I mean, that was beautiful. It's Sophie's Choice. It's Sophie's Choice. Oh, I that's... bawled like a baby. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, that... I cry at happy things. Maybe try that. Maybe try like. <laughs> did you have you? Maybe try this. Like I'm the healer now. <laughs> um, wait, have you seen Big Fish? Yes, I love that movie. It's a I very nice movie. It's so sweet yes. and it's so magical. So mm -hmm. magical. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I, don't you think movies are missing that now? Yes. Just like, yes. like Princess more Bride. Whimsy. Yes. Yes. You know, or yes. just good scripts like um, yeah. Fish Called Wanda. Oh yeah. Wow. Jamie Lee. I was on. I was on some red carpet, and someone was like, "So, what's your favorite holiday movie?" And you know, they they <laughs> yeah. ask you these questions, and you're like, "Uh, I don't, I don't yeah. really watch movies that are just holiday." You know, like. No, I'm yeah. Something, right. Say something, and I was like, I know. "Well, what's your favorite movie?" Fish called Wanda. Yeah, great. That's a good one. That's a really Such good a answer. Such a juicy one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I pulled the ripcord early and showed it to Krishna a couple years ago. Yes. Yes. I cannot watch another <laughs> fucking copy of Sleeping uh, Beauty. No. <laughs> like, I'm gonna stab myself <laughs> with a fork. Away. Okay, Matt, at this point, you know how obsessed I am with Everlane. You? Yes. What about me? And you know, too. I have the obsession as well. I've caught the bug. And you're wearing some Everlane head to toe right now. Literally, my denim is Everlane. Uh -huh. My cashmere shirt is Everlane. Ooh. My jeans are Everlane. Yes, huh? I'm dressed head to toe in Everlane at this moment. I cannot recommend Everlane enough. You are. I can't. An ambassadoria. I'm an ambassadrice. Yes. Um, and here's the thing. It's last minute holiday shopping, folks. Yeah. And this is a true story. My brother-in-law gets me an Everlane gift card every year. And I know gift cards are like very passe or whatever. Taboo. taboo but, passe taboo. But the fact that it's from Everlane just means that it's all good because it's money that I'm going to spend well on Everlane. This is, I'm not even reading ad copy right no. now. I'm just telling you straight I up. I can say his eyes are straight up looking at me dead in my <laughs> eyes. Straight he is up not even dead. Straight up dead. His eyes are straight up dead. Yeah. And he speaks from his heart when he talks about Everlane. <laughs> and I truly am so happy every Christmas when my Jewish brother-in-law gets me Everlane <laughs> gift cards. And I just go wild. I bought, I bought like fucking, uh, I bought, I bought the Renew line, which is, Ma out. Yeah. All their stuff is made of recycled plastic bottles. Yes, I love. And literally everywhere I go, I'm seeing everyone in these sweatshirts. You know who was rocking this? Our agent. Our agent. Was rocking uh, Everlane like fleece. Oh, great. That I recognize from the website. And of course, you know, I ran into my girl Marie Faustin at the Forever Dog Marie. holiday party the other night. She was rocking one of these. Yes. And th you know, it's not just taking the Forever Dog Podcast Network by storm because now we're talking about it to everybody. Hell, we're talking about it to you guys. Hell. Everlane is where it's at. Hell. Hell. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to fulfill your last minute shopping fulfillments. Fulfillments. You're fulfilling fulfill your fulfillments. fulfillments. And you can check out our personalized collection. There's mm. Matt's picks. There's Bowen's picks. Literally in a grid for your enjoyment. And if you don't even like us, you can see Food for Thoughts picks. Oh, Those I mean, gay boys. Those gay boys. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to check out our personalized collection or shop on your own at everlane.com slash ding dong. Plus, you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com forward slash ding dong. Everlane.com forward slash ding dong. D-I-N-G-D-O-N-G. So that you can look 
Oh, oh, good. Mm. Do you have a favorite movie that's come out this year? Like it's now Oscar season. Have you seen anything that you're like, oh hell yeah, Black Panther? Oh, yes, yeah. should Great. win every Oscar. I agree. I agree that like it's, what it's movie? Powerful and it's like it is a game changer. It was so exciting yeah, so to exciting. see the costumes, the hair, the yeah. cinematography, the battle scenes. It's just everyone being not white. It's, yeah, it's um. I love movies with white people. It's all I've ever seen. So <laughs> right. you know, Let's shake it up. I like just it. like. I want to see, it was so great. I saw it four times in the first week it came yes. out. I went to the premiere and Leslie great. Jones was like three rows behind oh, me. Screaming. And I wish I could take Leslie Jones to every movie. <laughs> but I, she was, like, so, she was fun. so funny screaming at the screen. And because it was a really packed crowd, yeah. it yeah. was just such a fun experience. And then I wanted to take Krishna. So I grabbed her out of school, took her straight oh, from school that. to the movie with her book bag, like at 3.30. Great. Then we went to my cousin's house over the weekend and I have two nephews who are around her age. I took them to see great, it. Right, yeah. Right. Um, and a couple of those times were in 3D as well. I think I just think <laughs> you got the full I experience. love I love the see uh the soundtrack from yeah. Kendrick Lamar it's box. So good. Yes. And at my boxing gym, like they're like, We can't possibly play this anymore. Yes, like you can. Like, yes, you can. You're from Africa. What are you talking about? <laughs> Absolutely. Wakanda can. forever. Yes, for, that means forever. It's actually rule of culture number seven. Wakanda, Wakanda forever, forever means, means forever. forever. I think I think it it's a movie that like rewards repeat viewings truly. I saw mm, I saw absolutely. It, I saw it twice and the first time I saw it I I had a bad experience because it was a packed theater thank god but I just had this group of like rowdy ass children with like some baby some caretaker type like babysitter type just like sitting there sort of letting them run amok and like and, like being on her phone totally and I just like I literally couldn't take in what was going on and I was like and then by the I end see I see you dirty au pair <laughs> <laughs> yeah bad au pair, dirty au pair. I, I walked out I was like I, I was like oh no I don't think I understood what was happening and therefore because of all the chatter because of all the chatter I was like didn't have an opinion on the movie mm -hmm. and I was like I have to see this again just to like n just clean just to like know yes. what this is and this sounds so crazy just talking about it now but I literally walked out of that the first time not having an idea of what it was no but yeah but then seeing it again like you i also just picked up on the things that like i had taken in the first time it's just an incredible movie it has one of the most beautiful powerful um scenes of the year i think which is you know spoiler alert right now if you haven't seen black panther you By probably now, have yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. have but that scene where michael b jordan dies at the end and it's yes. so beautiful, it's so so beautiful. So, i mean it's 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 just like <laughs> Wow, it's just it's just so above and beyond because you could have it's made a so Black cinematic. Panther and you could have done the superhero movie, but they made that art. Yes, that's yes. better than any Marvel movie I've ever seen. Mm. One hundred. And mm -hmm. I mean, also the the women characters were the not Avengers. appendages; yes. they were all different. Yes, yeah. they had all different personalities. Uh -huh. You know, they were so um, in their own essential selves. Yes. Yeah, you yes. know, they had inner lives, and that's something we don't usually see. And I say like. You know, people are talking about Michael B. Jordan for a supporting actor nomination, which, you know, I think he's one of the most famous, so that makes sense. But Denai Guerrero, Denai who, Guerrero. Uh, she, she is stunning. She stole the movie, Incredible. if you ask me. A hundred percent. And I was like, this is someone who's multi multi talented. Yes, yes, and yes. She's a playwright. She's I didn't know yeah. she was an actress that as powerful as this. I, know she's she's a I, don't, I don't watch. I saw her in Eclipse. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And she was, isn't that the play? That That's she, the play she wrote. Yeah, yeah. she was amazing. And uh -huh. I saw it when it was at Joe's, uh, Joseph Papp Theater, the public theater yeah, yeah, downtown. Yeah. Uh -huh. I saw it there before it went to Broadway. Uh -huh. It was so powerful. Wow. Yes. And everyone, I think Lupita Nyong'o was in yeah. that yes, too. Yes. Everyone in that cast was so fantastic. Yeah. Wow. It was brilliant. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I want to hear other stories. Yeah. Which is why I read. Which is why you read. <laughs> And you I will two, read as well. You two have to go see Slave Play. Jeremy O'Harris, it's at the New York Theater We're Workshop. going together. We're, okay. we're going together. No, I can get us, I'll try to get us tickets. Um, no, but seriously, it's, Josh Sharp and I went, we mm -hmm. walked away from that thinking, and he he's the guy who knows theater, our friend. Yeah. But he, we were both like, that's the best piece of theater I've ever seen in my life. Really? Like, truly, so smart, leaves no stone unturned when it comes to, like, there's, there's something that happens in the play that like mm -hmm. just blows your mind mm -hmm. and like that's all I can say but like truly I'm getting everyone at work like into it like Yeah, hey, you've been talking Col about this. Colin came over to me he was like I think I'm going to go see Slave Play this weekend cuz like you you you're so into it and you're so you're like it's biggest cheerleader. What's it about? The what thing you... is I can't so it starts mm. out with these vignettes of like sexual sort of 
it's essentially like you like you think it's about like One sexual page. subjug subjugation in uh -huh. antebellum times. Uh -huh. Um and then it just like it becomes it becomes all these other things and truly such 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 an inspired piece of work by Jeremy O'Harris. Mm -hmm. Check him out. He's mm -hmm. He's he has a career. He's writing uh, this show that Alan Cumming is in called Daddy. Oh, uh, that's off Broadway. Um, it all takes place in a swimming pool on stage. That's all people know about it so far. <laughs> what? But everyone's like losing their minds over it. They're like, it's going to be great. Like we don't know what it's going to be, but like it's going to be something brilliant. So anyway, just, I always just say we need out. more pools on stage. We do need more pools on stage. It's rule of culture number twelve. We, we need, need more, more pools, pools on stage. stage. Um, but I think. I just want to I want to ask Padma this before we get into the central question of then the show. Then you ask whatever you want. I I'm just always stunned at just the way that you're able to just not only talk about food like you do on on Top Chef and like just in regular sort of life, I guess, and the way you write about it, but also I just feel like you're someone who is so able and so adept at taking in all different types of culture and this is a culture show which mm -hmm. is a very broad definition of like everything right, basically about, like yeah. yeah what we consume um in all forms is there are you what is your discerning element in like picking out things that you like or dislike or just like what do you, like how do you figure out what to give attention to is what i'm asking basically it's hard you know things go across our screens now mm -hmm. that um at, at a velocity that mm -hmm. it's hard to really absorb them but i think some things always bubble up mm -hmm. whether that's an issue or a new thing or lately i think what there's been such a lack of common sense so i'm attracted to things that are just like, it's a stupid example, okay? But Go. in microcosm, uh -huh. <laughs> very microcosm, like I posted a picture of this toast oh. <laughs> with peanut butter. I know, you didn't know what I was gonna say. And, pome <laughs> and pomegranate, like last minute, Wait. late at night on a weekend. And you never know. And that thing, we've had like hundreds of people posting those pictures and sending them to us. And we repost them. And every, you know, I've just done press for Top Chef mm -hmm. because it just premiered Kentucky um, last week, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. um, every single interview I did from <laughs> <laughs> from Busy to like BuzzFeed, to, I mean, everything. Yeah. I mean, I was on Access Hollywood. I got there, they greeted me. It was eight with in the, the morning. Toast? With Pomegranate the toast, Pomegranate. look, we made this for you. I'm like, thank you so much. And it's just become this random thing because I think it tapped into something that was so familiar, put in a different way together. Wow. And I think, you know, and I think that's what attracts people to, to you know, anything I say or do. I don't, I don't discriminate between, um, you know, the importance of, tradition or what's better or you know food and politics i think and womanhood and parenting and family and all of that i don't think it's any different wow i treat everything with the same interest because if i'm not interested in it then i leave it behind right, right. but you know i was uh, it's funny to hear you say that you were a drama student i was a theater major in college as well mm -hmm. and so i think when you when you think you know, leaving aside the performance aspect of it, when you try to find a key into someone, you look at, you know, what are the things they're drawn to? What are the things they like? Mm -hmm. And that collection of opinions forms who they are because it's informed by what they've gone through. Right. Um, and I think it's very important. And, you know, social media is really bad and evil. However, mm -hmm. however, for me, it's been a way to control my narrative. Yeah. And talk about things that I don't get to talk about on Top Chef because the show is so formatted mm -hmm. and you know in order to do my job well and make sure everybody gets heard and the business of the show uh, gets through right. you know you don't really see a lot of me I yeah. mean you see my sure, opinions sure. about food in an analytical way but um, so it's been great for me to um, I used to write I used to I had a syndicated column for for a bit and then for the New York Times. Yeah, yeah, and I also yeah. um, did a style column in Harper's Bazaar. Mm -hmm. And so I come at everything as a writer, yeah. mostly like whether it, you know, it's plays I'm always, or movies, I'm always listening for the script. Yeah, mm -hmm. and And I think, what the hell was my point about this? Oh, well, just controlling my own narrative. Yeah, and I think yeah. like, it's it's more interesting to see what a full person is like yeah, and I'm a I can be that um, in Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Yeah. Especially because you know, like, 
when when I would imagine that when you are Padma Lakshmi and you are like up on this pedestal of being like the top chef host who has this like cultured opinion about food and all these things. It's like, you know, you do, you, there would be a part of you that wants to express to everyone, like get to know the real me. I also mm-hmm. have like, I'm interested in comedy. I'm mm-hmm. interested in these things. I like these films. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's true. I mean, look, I'm very proud of, of the show and I'm, you know, like I, I am genuinely an egghead about food. Like I right. published an encyclopedia for God's sake, you know, you know what you're talking on about. Spices. Just spices. Yes. And yeah. It's not even, like everything I else. couldn't believe the <laughs> like, spices in our book. I was like, there's a whole book about this. Yeah. Well, I wanted one to exist and yeah. I really couldn't find a good one. So yeah. I was like, darn it, I'm going to write one. Darn it, yeah. <laughs> so, and now we now everyone knows about green mango powder. Yeah. And now everyone knows. Truly, that was, that was crazy for me. That really blew it so open. So good. Green yeah. mango powder, especially in fried chicken crust. Okay. It's delicious because you have the sourness already in. Yeah. Because you put it into the like batter, the, basically? Yeah, like Great. whatever mix. And I put like Rice Krispies in there oh. and cornflakes yeah. and breadcrumbs and all that. So you like dredge it in, in that and you season that. You season that with salt and cayenne and green mango powders. I love that secret so, ingredient in there. Uh, so you're this 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 season takes place in Kentucky, and obviously you you think like every year it gets influenced by the city or place yeah. that it's in. Location. So here you are, like in Kentucky. Does that mean a lot of fried stuff? Are you and yes. are you eating all of it? I'm not eating all of it. I I, I ate a good fair amount. Yeah, I ate my share of it the first half of filming, uh-huh, and then uh-huh. I was like. I Girl, can't. you are eating so much. Yeah, food. heavy. Like I always yeah. eat a lot on on set. Right. But I do want to try the local specialities of wherever I'm going. So yeah. I did. I had all these pork pies and banana <sighs> croquettes and I was having mint julep slushies with bourbon. And then I, like the second week God I was bless. like, I don't feel so well. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Wait, a mint julep done right is Oh, it's the best. A plus. Yes. But between you and Tom, like you're pro- you're eating much more than he does. I eat double what he does. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. That wimp. Honestly, I'm there for, I mean, he's there for the first quick fire at the season, yeah. but yeah. I'm there for the every quick time. fire. Yeah. He just breezes in every other day. Yeah. And, and Gail's out the whole season. She, yeah, yeah, she's out. I actually saw her last night. Great. Um, I was at Andy's holiday party and she looked great. Oh, great. great. Um, she, you know, she was very pregnant. Right. And Cause, so, because the second up was, was the, the quick fire was for her. It was like her craving. Did you see her I torpedo belly? I was like, this is a joke. No, this is a cartoon. No, she gave birth two days after that. Oh my God. Three, Whoa. two. Was, yeah. it, was it twins? That was, that was a huge... No, it looked be- like twins, but no. It, just <laughs> it looked like twin belly. She has a beautiful boy. Lovely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> congrats Cole. to Gail. Yay, Gail. So do you feel like... Okay, so obviously you can't like have favoritism, but every season are you like, oh, I'm definitely pulling for that person or do you stay pretty removed are you like a RuPaul about about I'm, the whole I'm very RuPaul about yeah. it uh-huh. I, you know <laughs> I am because like I I just honestly I just judge them on their food yeah and then when they make a stupid mistake I'm like oh you're so capable of more than this right. like yes. you know you're rooting for all of them in yeah. a sense yeah. to get out of their own way you know now and again there's the, the annoying person you're like all right I you sure, sure. Be done with but, this. Yeah. yeah but you know like for the most part I luckily stand by all the decisions that we've made at the time we made them. Yeah, right, so, right, right. Um, I think this season is 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 no different. Like you wind up rooting for the three or four that at like mid season you know are right. doing consistently well, and sure. you know, it's interesting to see their cooking styles and and how they differ and yes. how they interpret the local ingredients or whatever. I don't know. I'm I get super. Um, into the weeds about stuff like that. Like uh-huh. I love, you know, and when it's at that level, especially the later episodes, it really is like, oh, well, if there was only one more leaf of parsley. It's, it gets truly. Because <laughs> yes, you have nothing else to judge it on. Right. You know? I mean, yeah. in the, whatever, just in the first quick fire yeah. of this season, it was just like, everyone was pretty solid and it was like, well, yeah. Yeah. what do you what do? do? We just nitpick and it. And that's when like, you realize like it's the true elite. Like you also slayed your episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes! Thank you. I mean, you were so good and also Thank you did not you. hold back. No, I think even the queens were like, um, Padma. Yeah. Well, I wanted to be constructive. Yes. Yes. Like, I'm not doing any of them a favor if I'm just like, well, your makeup was a little, you know, and I got uh, really into that shit yes. because I'm yeah. already deep into that shit at home. Yeah. Yes. Um, sadly, <laughs> I was away filming something so I had bought tickets but I couldn't go so I made Krishna's dad take her to DragCon 
Oh, oh my god! In New so York or nice. LA? Yes, in New York. In yeah. New York. Dad oh, to go to LA New York. And, and she's like, "Mom, that was great, but next year you're going." I'm like, "Listen, yeah. your dad <laughs> gets the same a with gold dad. star just for it's just for like braving he, that he, whole scene." Why not braving it? But you know, it's so many it's, people. It's families. It's, it's so many families. He doesn't it's know like what's seeing happening. Seeing at a golf tournament. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> so you had a PGA one of these tour. Sure, sure, sure. Oh my god! Oh my god! Everyone would have been gagged to see you there. I do you golf. Uh, no, no, we're talking about drag con. Yes. 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 Drag con, girl. We are already planning our outfits. Yes. yes. We just we we have a penchant for um <laughs> uh penchant. We have a penchant for dressing up at home. Yes. So like we start planning so our well. Halloween costumes at like I don't know Easter. Wow. So <laughs> yeah, I wish I was like that. Literally, literally <laughs> like we go to M and J trimmings. We have our hot uh, glue guns on. Mm-hmm. We have like we only have four packets of clear glue sticks versus fabric glue sticks. I think we better get some more. It's a challenge. It's so much fun. It's, it's so, so, so much so great. Fun. Was that we the first or second episode of All Stars that you were on? It was like no, you were, were on 10. early. Were you on ten? Oh, or season ten. Were you on All Stars three? I was on season 10. Yeah, you were 10. 10. You were 10. But it was yeah. early in the season. Yeah. And you yes. know, I he's so funny. And I got to know him really well because it was a really long day. Yeah. And he was so great. We became friends from that. Really? Wow. I, mean, I had known him a little bit, again, for a long time. Yeah. Right. I would see him at Emmy things or, you know, just right. in LA or whatever. And um, through that filming, we became friends. And, and he's really cool. You know, he... He he was very sweet. He said he drove to all the Mac stores in the Los Angeles area and bought everyone out of my brown eyeliner. Because oh my god! He was like, "Girl, it's really hard to find a brown that turns up." On I was like, "I know. That's why." I'm yes. Up. So your brown works on him really well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my Good brown. I had you. a. I did a. I designed a makeup line for Mac. For Mac. Uh huh. Um, earlier this year and um he you know he just loved it because you know i love makeup i'm like yeah. this step away from being a drag queen if you let me go <laughs> <laughs> if we're really there we're gonna have a full contour honestly absolutely rage we- contouring is yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's ask the question that we ask every yes. every guest and i can't wait to hear it, padma's answer so this is the question of our show which is what is the culture that made you say Culture is for me. The pop culture that was defining Mm -hmm. in your life that from a young age, like still is a touchstone that you can call back to. You know, I... I, I didn't want to go to college until I watched A Different World. Wow. Oh. You know, you're, yeah, my parents were always like, study hard, study hard. I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, uh, and uh-huh, uh-huh. I saw oh, A Different cool. World and I was like, wait, you get to live away from your parents? <laughs> yeah, and <have> interesting <laughs> lives away from them. They don't have yeah. to know what I do. Wow. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I've never seen A oh, Different World. Oh, A Different World, world is, uh, is a classic. It is the spinoff when Lisa Bonet got kicked yes. off of uh, Cosby, Cosby for yes. being sexually right. uh, too out Sug- there. Yeah, yeah, by yeah, Bill yeah. Cosby. So, <laughs> the yes, irony in that. I know. For doing Angel Heart with Milos, you know, directed by Milos Forman. With, yes. With what's his name? Mickey Rourke. Yeah. That was a sexy they movie. They did not get along. They did Lisa, Lisa and, and Mickey and Rourke. Bill Co- no, no, no. Oh. Lisa and Bill Cosby. And so oh, yeah, yeah, basically yeah. they knew Lisa Bonet was a star and they said, well, we're going to do this other right, show. Right. And a different yeah. world was yeah. born. Good, for her. Good yeah. for her. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and so you watched A Different World and you were like, Oh, this is I want to be Lisa Bonet. Yes. Culture and college. Is <laughs> yes, for me. totally. Wow. Totally. But like my culture, all my cultural touchstones start from TV. Mm-hmm. So really mm-hmm. I am the generation of MTV. Yes. yes. Like yes. MTV started right at the time I was hitting puberty. Wow. And I was like, what? I remember yeah. like watching Cindy Lauper. I remember when we didn't know who was going to be the bigger star, Cindy Lauper or, or Madonna. Madonna. Yeah, totally. It was a Britney Jeez. and Christina moment. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> but I mean, Michael Jackson, I remember yeah. being scared at watching Thriller. <gasps> like really like, oh, maybe I shouldn't watch it and yeah. like, not being able to fall asleep after. I wish we still um, had that novelty around I know. Like that. Now, you know, like I grew up with music videos. I remember yeah. Annie Lennox, all that stuff. But it was always oh, TV. Like I, you know, grew up. I say that Oprah was a second mother because you know I would come home from yeah, school and I watch bet. Oprah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We all did. We all watched Oprah and baked potatoes in our new microwaves. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, microwaves really came out around the time of MTV. Madonna, yes, <laughs> Madonna yes. and microwave rose at the same time. Yes. Truly, it's rule of culture number fourteen. Madonna, Madonna and, and microwaves, microwaves rose, rose up at the same time. time. Yeah. Actually, no, it's. I, th- I think it's literally like there are articles about this about how Velveeta came out at the same time that MTV did, and like, 
like uh, making homemade nachos was like went hand in no, hand. No, Velveeta was before. Really? <laughs> okay, you so. I'll defer to you. The authority I think on so. food. I may be wrong, but you can make Velveeta at home. Yeah, no, right. No, oh, wait, I mean just without, with, Velveeta, with, without Velveeta, like you can, with real cheese, like you can as long as you add sour salt, uh huh, like citric oh acid. Oh my god. To um. Cheese, grated cheese. cheese, it'll melt better. Isn't that? But isn't there some irony in, in in a way where it's like you're making cheese and like actual cheese into something sort of worse? <laughs> into no, a worse because version you want it to melt. <laughs> okay, got it, got it, got it. I mean, it. here's great, here's great, great. a real true confession. Please, Ugh. I like those nasty movie theater nachos. Me, me too, too. Me too. With wow. that, like hot cheese cheese products. Cheese, cheese product because it's so creamy. <laughs> I love it. And I, but I won't get it unless they have the pickled jalapenos. Yes, yes, and yes. Like more. Yes. No more. Like, yeah. you know I'm going to get through half these chips. Oh, my God. And all these jalapenos are going to be gone. <gasps> this is the beginning of an I don't think so, honey. <laughs> I think the jalapenos have to be there because otherwise it's just sodium on on tortilla. On rubber. Yeah. On it's rubber. very right. basic sodium. without yeah. it. It's very basic without it. Very basic without it. But, but I love it, that hot cheese that uh-huh, you almost burn uh-huh. your fingers sticking wow. into. Do you have a favorite music video from that time? Yes. Um, <laughs> hungry like the wolf. Wow! <laughs> they filmed it in Sri Lanka, I think. Duran Duran. Uh-huh. Duran Duran was then, good. Then you know, years later, I um, I mean, I wasn't like the biggest freak. I didn't have posters and stuff. Yeah. That was so teenage. Uh, I was already like in my mid twenties when I was point. a freshman, like mentally and emotionally. But That's I fortunate. did. I did love Duran Duran. So later, when I actually was twenty two or twenty four or something, I was a model. I met. <gasps> Duran Duran and Shut I became up. friends with them because I don't <sighs> even remember how and I don't think I could speak full sentences no. for like the first couple of times that I was around them wow. because wow. I was so start struck what is is there what is is there some quality about Duran Duran that like makes them stand out above let's I mean like I mean they were pretty they singular for the tunes. time they had good they tunes. were the only they were the first ones who weren't afraid of being beautiful mm, as men bingo. like you you know you had all these rock stars and if they were guys that you know yes michael jackson but he was a whole sure, different thing sure. prince and michael jackson yes yes yeah i remember when we thought prince was the weird one compared yeah. to yeah. Prince and michael jackson oh, well yeah God. yeah because you know? he was he so was like sad. embracing the weird yeah so like these were the first white men that were actually like we're gonna dress like really fabulous and wear right. eyeliner and everything but we're straight. And I was yeah. like, you know, I, I, my best friend was gay uh-huh. in high school. Mm-hmm. And so. Out gay? Uh, no. I mean, I, I knew he was gay and right. he knew he was gay, but you know, he came out to me like on the phone in college and mm. I was like, uh, okay, I knew that, but I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you told me, you know. But then you were a huge part of his life then, which is. No, we, yeah. I mean, we wound up moving in together and then, you know, and then other stuff happened and whatever. But when I moved back after modeling in the nineties, I used to live in Milan in Paris. Uh-huh. And then I moved back to the States at the end of my late twenties. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. And so um, I had an apartment with him apartment with him again for a bit but i mean most of my i'm so embedded in gay yeah. culture mm-hmm. you know i'm just gay without the sex <laughs> you, you are a gay icon do you and like so is that do gay men like literally throw themselves at you like i'm or, i'm so happy that yeah. they do though I'm yeah. like, yes just I'm, take my it. pollen is what every gay bee needs yes you know? your pollen is what that's every a, it's so, that's a title of Epps. <laughs> title of Epps. <laughs> Pollen that every the gay, gay bee, bee needs. Every gay bee needs. Gorgeous and poetic. Yeah. I mean, and because you, you get the sense that some people, like, it takes them a minute to adjust to being a gay icon. Like, even back in the day, like, Cher. Yeah, You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. she, I think it took a second. Because even remember you when. You think she had to calibrate and adjust to that? Well, when Chaz first came out yes, as a lesbian. She when, when Chaz was chastity. Yes, yes. Like, it was this moment. And Cher's on the record of saying, like, I felt that I had failed as a parent. And that's right, Cher. right, right. Well, so, like, she's seventy something years old. It's a different so that's thing. Why. Yeah. yeah, I know. No, I didn't have to adjust. No, I mean, you just I, were in it. I was, I was praying on bended knee for the crown. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> where would I be without my gaze? Like, I openly invited it. Like, when I was living in Los, I, I'm from New York, and I grew up. You know, my early childhood here because I came here when I was four. But I was in high school yeah. in a suburb of Los Angeles, and in Santa Monica, people who were you know, around in the 80s in LA, we'll remember this. There was a gay club Mm -hmm. on Santa Monica Boulevard where the French market still stands called Peanuts. 
Peanuts. Love that. And I used to sneak into Peanuts when I was in high school. Wow. But it was a really sexy crowd. Like it wasn't Uh like now I find that you go to gay bars, which I do, and it's mostly men. Yes. And a few of the chosen few like me. Or (laughs) it's very homogenized. Or or you go to the cubby hole. Right. And that is it. Which is its own scene. And yes, which is fine. (laughs) But um um you know, my boyfriend doesn't like to go there with me anymore because he said it's like worse than fighting <laughs> off men. But like it's I I love going everywhere. Like I want to meet everyone, yeah. but they don't. Ha- I want I want peanuts in New York again. Let me tell you, let me set the scene. Please. So there are, it's a mixed crowd. Yes. Everyone smells good and is fashionable. And I'm there and there are like these very European, elegant um women les women lesbians <laughs> women at the bar women i was gonna lesbians. say who are probably lesbians yes but like very el- you know lipstick lesbians lipstick right. like, right. yes, like pr- you know picture like jane fonda Ugh, you know i like- am picturing <laughs> jane fonda i love that woman yeah so <laughs> like you know i don't know like it was just cool and then there were gay men obviously but then there were straight couples there it was the let I me mean, put it for you it was the era when madonna was dating Warren Sean Penn, Beatty, uh, Warren Beatty Warren but Beatty. really close to Sandra Bernhardt. Right. Uh-huh. And all three uh-huh. of them would show up at Peanuts. Yes. So extend what their t- little menage <gasps> outward. Wow. I love that. And they would have these uh, dance, like balls and dances. And yes. there was one woman named Paula that, you know, I think she was transgendered, but I was like, there's no way that is a guy. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really know about tucking then. Yeah, you know? sure, so sure. maybe it was a guy. You know, yeah. I didn't know. So I was really around that a lot, like at 14, at 15, 16. Yes, so, yes. you know, I, I'm very comfortable in that element. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Because it, it was a part of your culture. Yeah. It is. It is really a part of my culture. I yeah. mean, I um, I remember also New York in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. You know, because my we didn't know any better. My mom would let me run around. Like, mm-hmm. I skated all over the city when I was in fourth grade alone, you know? like Wow. wow. Yeah, you couldn't do that now. But, you know, <laughs> we all... Like, and people would, you know, the kids were carted to these parties. You know what I oh mean? Oh, my God. Were, did you ever go to Studio 54? Were you? A, no, okay. no, no, no. Not that bad. But I did go to the... <laughs> I mean, I would have been seven. But yeah. yeah just like um, so, a yeah. whole other thing. Skating around but Studio I did, 54. But I did sneak into Peanuts. And I remember wow. it was so sexy. And, you know, like I thought, maybe I'm a little gay. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everyone's a little gay. It's personally, a spectrum. But everyone's on the Kinsey. Yes. Yeah. I agree. But, um, you know, I just, I feel at home there. Wow. I mean, but, but this Half is. Our, a lot of our crew on Top Chef is actually. Oh, gay. really? Yeah, Lovely. Yeah. Do you get, to, you don't get different crews in different seasons. No, in Great. fact, we're like a very tight knit family. Love we that. do hire a lot of locals sure, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. in each city, but there is a group, a core group of us. Like my stylist is gay. Uh-huh. My makeup artist is gay. Uh-huh. My, um, assistant on the show is gay uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, you know uh-huh. and that's just like my little mini tribe within yeah, yeah, yeah. the larger um structure of it yeah, yeah. i yeah. get that from the show it's weird but i get like a gay thing from the show well a lot of the well, a lot of the chefs are like come in and they're queer right. or they're and then, and there's no what what i think top chef has done that a lot of other reality competition shows didn't used to do was that it it didn't make they wouldn't make the the queerness or the sexuality of its of its contestants like central. It wasn't a central thing. Yes, which I think is refreshing. And even on Project yeah. Runway, right? Yeah, yeah. it doesn't same, matter. No, it doesn't I mean, matter. It matters, but not when cooking. You right. Know? Yeah. 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 In it the same way, it doesn't stories. matter if you're a man or a woman. Yes. Exactly. You know? Right. Totally. When you're watching Project Runway too, and you find out one of the designers is straight, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa what? Yeah. Like, I know. You know you're you're man, and you're like, more. Are you you're like, you had to do that. <laughs> yeah. With the impediment of like missing. <laughs> In fact, I think style one, jeans? one wow. of the winners, or one of the winners, or one of the finalists was like a straight man who was just like very European, and I was shocked. I did not realize he was straight until the end, and I was like, Dimitri or something. Thing. but like <laughs> I was like yeah, let's pick Dimitri but like he was like so talented and I yeah. was like yeah well you can take gotta open tunes. your mind man there you go books. gotta read some books yeah. read some goddamn books actually I three years late but I'm on almost like within pages of finishing um Tanahisi co- Oh, Tanahisi goes between the world and me. Mm. It's so good. It's it's so I've inhaled it. Like I started it yesterday. Yeah, and it's great. It makes me want to have a kid. <laughs> but also, like it's it's suffused in tragedy and racial. It's so history. right. It's, it's so succinctly and poetically. It's beautiful. Really renders the situation palpable. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I I read all kinds of funky things. The other thing I read was The Year of Yes. Oh, Stronger oh, Rhymes. Sure. Yes, yes. I, <laughs> Pat I, was I, nodding. Lo- I love a celebrity autobiography. <laughs> I even, do too. It, I but, eat it up. And even if they're like, oh my God, I roll. Like when I read Lena Dunham's, a lot of uh, page to page, I had a different opinion on it. Yeah. Sure. But I love it because you get a, it's a true slice of life. It's true. And like what I like about it is like, it's someone telling their own story, which speaks volumes. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Like, yes. like it's true. It's yes. like how mm-hmm. important they think they are. Like, you know, definitely. Like, yes. How like, their take on the situations. Like, I think that some well, of these. Well, it's different though. Lena's book is a book of essays. Of course. And, you know, it's different than a memoir looking back. Of course. Yes. The best memoir, one of the best memoirs I think ever written is called The Liar's Club by Mary Carr. Yeah. She's a poet. I mean, you will you it, you'll love it. Okay. It, uh-huh. it feels like um, a Laura Dern movie, like Wild <gasps> at Heart. Like wow. it's just like just it's beautiful, yeah. and it actually I think you know sent this kind of rebirth or this renaissance in memoir writing um, in this country like ten years ago yeah. or whatever. Wow, wow, but wow. she's very talented. I I was I love that book. It's one of my favorite books. Yeah, no, I like memoirs too. I love, I love memoirs. Them. I I really do. I. I there, there. If I know something is coming, I'll always like you know which one I really want to read, which is old now, but I really want to read it. Which it's one? Portia de Rossi's. Oh yeah, really? Um, uh, because what Mia Farrow's is great too. Mia Far- I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure that one is rich. <laughs> it's so rich. So is Jane Fonda's. Did you see, see Woman in Five, five Acts? Yes, it's yes. based on the memoir. Oh my God, it's based, oh God. It's based on, on the, the memoir. Book. Fabulous. Can we just talk? I thought yes. it was only me who like so, chronicled my life oh. in periods of the men I've dated. <laughs> that was so phenomenal. <laughs> we all do that. I mean, after you get out of school, like what other measure do you have? You do. Yeah. There's no structure. You're just set loose. You're Honestly. like, how do I demarcate like, this stage in my life? I'm not a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, a senior. I'm a Dave, a Mike. Uh, <laughs> yes. Carlos. Yes, oh my God. Yeah. Teddy, you know? yeah, yeah, I'm, Teddy. Teddy. I'm, I'm in, I'm in yeah. my post Hansel phase right now. Oh, oh my God. So, no, you spoke his name. I spoke his name. Whatever. Um, Hansel. Hansel. He's great. Hansel We're f- I'm getting dinner with him on Thursday. We're going to hang. Is We're still friends. How? No, we like. He literally the day that he he broke up with me, he was like, "Well, I'm giving a talk tomorrow about transgender health. You should come." I was like, "I think that's too soon." I, yeah, no, like, you were gonna go, and then I told you it was well, too soon. No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I knew in the back of my you mind. have to just be, you know. Sometimes you, you just have to cut the finger off. There you go. See, oh, let uh, it grow back. See, Padma, I lived with my ex after we broke up for seven more months. And looking back, it was like, oh, I should have gotten out of there. Matt, <laughs> Matt, Matt nursed the finger. Matt polished oh, the damn no, thing. I, I put a new nail on the thing, <laughs> waved it around. Patched it up with some sticky putty. Yes, yep. yes. No, but yeah, you got to. I'm, I'm taking my dating advice from Padma, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Jane Fonda and Five Acts, she's phenomenal. It's great. She's lived so many, so lives. many lives. So many And I love the hair, the different hairstyles. Yes. It wasn't that amazing. It's amazing. The clute hairstyle is clute. beyond. Iconic. Beyond. And then the Barbarella. Yes. Can we talk? Yes, we yes. can. <laughs> you oh forget God. how many, uh, how how much iconography there is with Jane Fonda. Just Absolutely. with Jane Fonda, the Vietnam War, the the aerobics, the aerob- aerobics. That Huge. was probably one of my first touchstones. Really? Yes. Jane Fonda. I, I was very you. very young, and I remember my mom buying it. Yeah. <laughs> Did, the buns of steel. Yes, I think so. Yeah, we had that. Did you watch soap operas? Yes, all my children. All my children. All my children. Erica, Erica Kane. Kane. Erica Kane. This and is the Cher first time. My first. <gasps> wow. T- like, wh- like touchstones of like womanhood. Wow. Like, like celebrity idol worship. Like, people. like fashion, hair. Yes, yes. I mean, when I started watching Erica Kane, yes. she had a full on bouffant. She was the Come like out. this. Long. Forgive Vixen. the expression, but she was the bitch goddess. She was you know, the bitch she goddess. Was the first, yeah. Yeah. She was the first like fun to watch diva. Oh, she's of, great of soap operas, and that, I think like people like Susan Lucci is like a punchline now because of the Emmy losses. I was losses, gonna say Susan Lucci. No, no, Susan Lucci is a part of culture. She is. She, she, is. Yeah. Erica, Erica Kane. Kane. Erica Kane is Erica part of culture. Kane, yeah. yeah. Well, Susan Lucci and Erica Kane, but my they're, mother. They're one, I mean, she's nice, but other than the fact that she's a nice person, they're the same person yeah. in my mind. <laughs> I met her. I thought I was going to shit about. Oh my god! I literally yeah. was like, oh my god. She is an icon. Um, even the the fact that my immigrant mother kept up with all my children, like, just says it was it huge. All. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it was because, and I don't know when the hell I watched it, except because <laughs> I went school? to it. No, but it was on at one. 
Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> Even so it was when you would stay home sick? I no, guess but this so. Every once in a while. Or like, you know, Columbus Day or whatever the hell. Because <laughs> like I got sent to India every summer and my mother worked full time. So I don't know. like When you could have caught I, it. I, but I knew enough. Like I would watch it, you know, every few weeks or months that I knew what the hell was going on when yeah. she's on husband seven or eight. She or ended what? up with like 15 husbands. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. There's just something. She she had so many different lives and she was always fun to watch. And, and Susan Lynch always played it for everything it was worth. Oh, God. yeah. It was camp in the best way. With yes, capital totally. C. And just spe- totally on and off the screen. It's like you keep up with the marriages. It's 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 the Liz Taylor of it all. It's That's like, what so I fun. also miss on TV. Yeah. yeah, I miss the camp of television. Right. You know, it sort of it looked like it was going to come back with Empire. Yes, and it kind of didn't. It didn't, didn't stick. And it, didn't. it feels like it. If it's still on, and it feels like people still watch it, but it's not as like culturally powerful yeah. as it right. was in that first season. But the like first Taraji season was fully doing oh, so girl, fun. So fun. That was fun. such a juicy, juicy, juicy role. The best. Well, that's what I saw Glitter as. I saw it as camp. Yes. 100%. And you it have is, to look at it But like I think that. we were all in a different movie. Like, I saw it as camp. Sure. But, you know. You, you were great in I th- it. I can maintain. You, you really were. You're so fun so in it. Good. Is that you singing? Yes. yes. It's so good. Can I, mean, I tell you, I was actually <laughs> hoarse. You were hoarse? I was because it's hard to sing bad. I mean, I sing yeah. bad normally, right. but it's hard to like I was trying to be, have the intention behind it. In my it. mind, I was in a comedy. Uh, I, yeah. You know, like <laughs> I don't know. I think I think you were yeah. so, you were so the moment that you walked into that dressing room, like that first scene, I was just like It don't matter. Well, it, the, like the way that you They're just back up. They're just back up. Yes, they won't matter. Like like Turn you, Sook down, turn Billy all the way uh, <laughs> Oh my God! It's my life. But just the way that Padma walks into the dressing room with uh, the manager, I'm just like, that- Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard, of course. I was like, that person knows, like, is 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 exactly selling the whole up. thing for me. Here's yes. why I played that role the way I did. I think because, <laughs> you know, I have I have lived my life until very recently, very like in fear, not in fear, but I was really like insecure and Uh felt like I didn't belong Uh and intimidated by everyone else in the room. Yeah. And so I I know how I perceived those people. Yes. Right. And that's what I was playing. I was playing one of those people mm-hmm. who had all the power. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it was so fun to experience what that was like. Yeah. You know? And to pretend at that. To Can I pretend ask it. you a character thing about Silk? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that Silk knew that Terrence Howard was using Mariah's voice to over her and then she was in on it she was like yeah we'll use this girl's voice and I don't think she cared she didn't care she was just out for I herself she didn't want to know the details just okay. make me a fucking star hell wow. fucking yes <laughs> you heard it from the source herself <laughs> we've mean, all least, been asking about what Silk's motivations were I mean were. honestly I, I, that's how I played it you know there's another scene in there which sadly gets cut oh no um, where you know there's a fight that happens between Mariah and Max Beasley I love Max yes. Beasley He's this English actor. Movie. Yeah, I don't know Great. what he was doing in that movie either. I'm like, you couldn't find somebody from America who <laughs> was in so hip hop culture. You had to like, <laughs> yeah. I love Max. He's, you know, I used to live in London, so I know him a little bit. He's yeah. a great actor and a great guy. But I was like, this is such weird casting. It's <laughs> weird they couldn't get like, yeah, it's weird they couldn't get someone like a list. Marky in New York. Mark. Marky right? Mark. He would have been like a McConaughey. It, it, essentially, he's too. doing Marky Mark drag. Right, yes, right, right. Yes. He is. Yes. But the character was British. No, 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 the character no. was the character was literally Marky Mark. Oh, he, he came in and did the whole Marky Mark thing. Like they and, had a dialogue yes. coach on there oh, on the set. Wow. I think so. I don't know if it was for him or Mariah. There were a lot of people on set, but <laughs> I mean, and this was when Mariah was dating Luis Luis Miguel. Luis Miguel, and you would see there. This is when people still used limousines. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, maybe Mariah still uses maybe them. She's I don't know. I can tell does, you from, from having just seen her in Gowanus. Talk about songwriting. She uses like an esca- it's like a black escort. Okay, yeah, great, well, great. these were the days of like those really long Stretch. prom yes, limousines, yes, yes, and yeah. their limousines like parked right next to each other. And then he would go visit her in her trailer, and they would deliver pizza boxes to it. And then like half an hour later, the pizza boxes would get thrown out of the door for like oh. whoever, like whatever the ones that hadn't eaten here. You guys can have the rest. Wow. This is so funny. She had the craziest boyfriends. There was Tommy Matola and then Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Did she go 
out with Derek Jeter? Yeah. During the like butterfly era, my all when that was a single, she was dating no, Derek I Jeter. No, I missed that whole period. <sighs> well, Ma- Mariah, this I must is have been thing. in Italy. Mariah at the time. was my number one. <laughs> there are all these holes in my popular yeah. culture. From when you were working. From when I was not only working, but you know, I was sent back to India yeah, every yeah. fucking summer. Uh-huh. So like when hair came out. I was not there for you missed hair. Oh. Certain like Star Wars movies. I I don't like Star Wars. I mean, I don't not like Star Wars. But you, I just, just you, you our fans it. aren't gonna like come for you. <laughs> well, my my prerequisite white male over there is Anthony? like shaking his well, head. Well, you stay seated. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, like it's just it's weird. Like yeah. you know, so there are all these holes in pockets. So I must have missed Derek Jeter and, and Mariah. Mariah. They're the they same were flash in the pan. They must have looked pretty. Together. Everyone was obsessed <laughs> with the fact that they were both biracial. Uh, uh, that was like. A, a story in the news but I think they and then maybe even it was like something one of them said like we understand each other because we're both super famous and also biracial um, but oh I re- weird that, that, that was like a thing or at least that my 10 year old brain oh, heard okay, and remembers okay. to this day um, or maybe it was just some disc jockey talking about it but Mariah was my number one like when I was a little yeah. kid really I would play the butterfly album <gasps> out and so is that this, the you've got me feeling emotion? No, no that That's was off, that was off emotions. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So that was ninety two. Okay. Ninety one. Okay. But this was like once I started to actually like music, mm-hmm. uh, it was like ninety seven, and I, I loved that butterfly album, and so, she was like at the height for me when mm-hmm. glitter came out. So oh. literally, Padma, on the day of nine eleven, my mother pulled me out of school because of what was happening. We lived in Long Island. And you're like, can we see glitter? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like well, are you taking me out Just because wait. you know how excited I am to go get the glitter album? My mom was like, no, um, something happened in the city oh, and I no. don't want you in school. I want you home with me. And I was like, well, we have to go get the glitter album. I'm so, I've been so excited for September 11th, 2001. Oh my God. Because that's the day that glitter is coming out. Matthew. Oh, yeah. And she was like, I think it's going to be closed, babe. And I was like, no, no, it's not. And I yeah. freaked out. I said, we have to go to the Tower Records to get glitter. And literally. <laughs> on 4th and Broadway. No, no, no. Literally. We, it was Long, Long Island. Island. So I was, like, I was like, whatever it was. I was like, we must go. Yeah. She was like, you don't understand. It's not going to be open. I was like, if you don't take me, I'm going to freak out. Right so now. then she took me to the store. The workers at the store were like, we are not we're gonna go home. Are you crazy? My my mom was like, just give me the just album. Please, just let them buy the album. Like, because like it's just gonna make it easier for everyone. And we got it. And so while like everyone was dealing with that day, I was listening to like you and only you do the freaking thing you do. And That's I'm very so good. You. He knows it. He knows it front to back. He knows it front to back. Oh I love that shit. <laughs> yes. You know. I mean. I'm so fun. So, I live just like I live. just like how my coming to New York story has Padma suffused in it. Your 9-11 yes. story has Padma and I, oh, I'm so deep. Yeah, I'm, I'm deep in it. You, you are. are in it. Let me tell you. And I actually I don't think I saw the movie in theaters just because 9-11 had just happened. <laughs> Damn it. But, but I had the album. I know. And, and I still think hashtag justice for glitter. Justice yeah, for totally. glitter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just one happened. of my fi- like it's true. Like I you know, one of my most proud things, there's this ice cream place. Um, called the Big Gay Ice Cream. Yeah, yeah, we know uh-huh. it. Okay, well, um, uh, one year for uh, Valentine's Day, they asked if they could do my recipe in all of their soft serve machines. Oh my god, that's amazing! It was rose petal, and they did a cardamom one. Oh, that's and so great! It was, and it's your recipe? Yeah, yeah, from one of my books. It was <sighs> such a huge thing that I told like all my family. Like they were like. All my friends, I think I sent like a general email, like, hey, everybody. <laughs> I don't even creams. tell them when I'm like on the Today Show, but I was like, there's this ice cream store in the village. And, you and they're doing all my I made them make, I was like, you don't even have to pay me. Just give me like, a, make me a cake for Krishna's birthday because her birthday is oh. in February. Oh and God. I was so happy because the only other person they have done that with at the time was B. Arthur. <laughs> oh, right. Because they, they do the Golden Girl stuff. They have all the Golden Girls characters. I, I was that. like, I have made it now. That's oh my god, iconography that is right gay. There. That is gay iconography. I know. Right that is there. gay totally. iconography. Big gay iconography. I know. <laughs> Maybe I that's wanna... the title of it. Um, I, 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 I'm, I can't let go of this thing that Padma said earlier, where she was like, because, like, what the culture that you take in defines who you are. It's, yeah, it's it how is. you express yourself, and I think that is like, I think that is why you are so, so well liked, well respected. It's because you take in so much. You've you've processed so many different things from different f- areas and fields, and that that just makes you a 
a complete person in other people's eyes. I mean, it, if Thank people you. come at you with respect, but also relat relatability in this way that is so balanced and so so comforting and so wonderful. Um, so thank you for coming on. Thank, thank you, you so much. Me. Powerful. Powerful. Not, but it's Yay. not over yet. It's not over. We're, We're going to do, do I Don't Think So Honey. Yes. Which is our segment that's um, birthed many a live show. We are going on tour. We are. And you can buy tickets um, online. Yes. They're on sale now. We're going to be in Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, Vancouver for wow. JFL, Dallas, yes. Austin for Moon Tower, Houston, D.C., Boston, and Philly. Philly. Yes. So all those cities and probably more going to be added. We're very very excited that's going to be February through April and we're going to be doing I Don't Think So Honey live so now it's I Don't Think So Honey Which it's is... our one minute to rant against something in culture can I ask you when you're going to be Please. in Austin oh um, April 19th end of April oh so not yeah. for South by Southwest not for South by but I but mean, things could happen where we things go things could happen where we yeah. go Um, yeah if, if work lets up I will definitely if either. work lets up lets up I don't if know SNL lets up yeah yeah you know how they let up <laughs> um, actually famous... I did this thing after I did our comedy show yeah. at ASCAT for <gasps> oh, TV. yeah I uh, loved it so, so much they're the best I love them so much the last time I, cause I did improv with them years and years ago yeah oh, I remember yeah, them saying right. you took a class yes yes um, and as part of this like you know because they were on Bravo. Because they, they 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 did a did show they? on Bravo did, for like a quick oh, yeah, second. That's yeah. right. No, this was like way back when I was pregnant and uh -huh. I had a car accident on my way there. So like oh, I haven't no. been to UCB since then. Oh, but no. it was great. Yeah. yeah. So they were so zone. cool. Yeah. They had you do storytelling and monologues mm -hmm. and stuff, and then they improvised on oh, so mm -hmm. fun. You're the perfect guest for that. I wanted to improvise with them. I almost wanted <laughs> to <laughs> tap in and be <laughs> like, like, hey, let me step in. Oh my god. We'll make an improv star of you. Yeah. Okay. So Matt and Matt Matt and I will go first, then we'll have Padma and then we'll close out. I have a good one. You have a good one? Yeah. Great. This is Matt Rogers' I Don't Think So, Honey, and his time starts now. I don't think so, honey. Anyone who says, oh, I don't know celebrities, like that's supposed to be a good thing oh. or impress me that you don't care about <laughs> pop culture. I'm specifically talking, honey, to my Lyft driver in LA who was the chattiest of them all, and you know oh. they get chatty on the Lyfts in LA, uh -huh, uh -huh. who said to me after I got out of a podcast, she said, what were you doing? I said, I was on a podcast where I talked about pop culture. He says, oh, I don't know celebrities. Wow. And then somehow Ben Affleck gets brought up and he all of a sudden has a big opinion on Casey Affleck 30 seconds. and Manchester by the <laughs> Sea. And I'm like, okay, so if you don't know celebrities, why the hell do you have an opinion on Casey Affleck and this niche ass movie? <laughs> and I'll tell you why. It's because you only said that to try to impress 15 me. 15 seconds. Because it's this straight male thing, this like heteronormative thing of like wow we're too cool for pop culture if you think you're too cool to know what's going on in the world Five I have seconds. another thing coming for you honey I don't think so honey you know about Casey Affleck you know about culture stop lying to me bitch and that's one oh my minute. god oh my god spirited <laughs> I don't know if I can do this it. is I don't think so honey Padma you oh. stepped into the lion's uh, den when, when you were talking about what were you talking about just uh, you got fired up before about nachos about the movie theater nachos I did but I think I have something better okay. Okay, I love that. Great. So, but but can you believe? I can't believe these people that. who think it's like cool. Well, also, celebrities doesn't mean pop culture. Exactly. Pop, pop culture is so much more Ugh. than celebrities. Yeah. It has to do with people. Yeah. And I, and I hate that word celebrity too because yeah. now everyone's a fucking celebrity. Everyone's a celeb. No. You know, everyone is. That's the problem. It's like five minutes and they're a celebrity. You I get mean, the blue check and you think you're a celeb. <laughs> yes. yeah, I mean, Matt. I like to say people of note. People, people of note. note. But I will say Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> thank you for my new blue check. Because <laughs> she got a blue check. You got a blue check on Twitter too? Yes, honey. Congrats. What's thank the you, blue bitch. check? The verified. The verified thing. Oh, you just, you've probably been verified since the age of one. Yeah. So you don't even care. I started verified. You started you verified, now we're still verified. here. That's because okay, so. I was born before Twitter. Like my fame was born before Twitter. And there Absolutely. you go. So That's it why. precedes You've only known the verified life. Um, <laughs> okay, so... This is Bowen Yang's I Don't Think So Honey, mm. and his time starts now. I don't think so, honey. White elephant, honey. This is the Christmas season. Do oh, not. Oh, yes. White elephants are structurally flawed. It's for the fact that other people can steal is mm, no. just crushes people's dreams. And I am all for a secret Santa with no cap, with no price cap. 
it just means as long as everyone's coming in with the understanding that it's not about the price of the gift it's about what you know what the sentimentality of it blah, uh, the, blah, fe- blah. the feeling of it whatever <laughs> I think White Elephant is structurally seconds. insane I was just part of the uh, of New York Magazine strategist celebrity White Elephant gift exchange I oh, got God. gorgeous Zabar's locks um, from someone uh, it was great I mean it's it's locked so I I'll it eat it <laughs> it, it is vacuum packed <laughs> they'll ship it to me in a fucking box 15 seconds I just think <laughs> Gift exchanges should be, I think, I think out with White Elephant, just Secret Santas only. White Elephant is crazy. It's not personal. It's randomized. Five seconds. It's not personal. It's literally impersonal. Yeah. And therefore, Secret Santas only. I'm a purist at heart. That's my minute. And that's one minute. I agree with you. The White Elephant thing is crazy because if I, if I was given a gift, I like the gift. <laughs> I think Pat do you do a, White as Elephant? A, as a supporter of White no, Elephant. No, I don't. I just burped and I didn't know if you heard Oh, me. no. We didn't hear it, but now, <laughs> now the world knows. <laughs> I had a little too much champagne. Yes, <laughs> and I was no. like, let me just move away from the mic. We're grateful for that the champ. <laughs> so grateful for the champ. I thought it was about White off. Elephant. No, I don't no, like no. White Elephant. I don't like White Elephants. I don't like Secret Santas no, either. Me either. I think, you know, gifts should only be given when really felt like there's yes. a kind of reason to give a gift. We don't, In my family, we only give gifts to the kids and everyone wants to know oh. what you know, Krishna wants. And I'm like, she doesn't need anything. Yeah, that's the thing. Except yeah. leather pants, which she keeps asking <laughs> for. How, well, she had Everything to be a pop star. black. And yeah. I'm like, oh, please. She's a New Yorker. <laughs> I know. She wants to become a pop star. She does. And she will become one yet. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So listen, okay. this is Padma Lakshmi's I Don't Think So Honey. <laughs> and Padma, your time starts now. Okay. Did you steal that from me? What? Your time starts now because that's what I. I say. mean, sure. Let's say we, we did. St- we we stole your time starts now all from Top Chef. We, we'll say we, we, we st- we'll say yes. We stole it from you, but all you have to do is say I don't think so, honey, and go for I it. Okay. You steal this from us. Okay. Ready? And your time starts now. I don't think so, honey. I have to tell you what I really get upset about is um, I've been getting uh, a little bit of um, slut shaming fan mail, oh. which I guess is not fan it's mail. It's not fan mail. No, I almost posted one of these letters, but then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to. Yeah. yeah. But I got three, you know, the show started two weeks ago. So we've had two episodes on air. And after the first episode, I got a letter about, you know, how I was wearing something too provocative. Oh. 30 seconds. And I was like, what the hell? First of all, they're like, you know, the show's not about you. It's about oh. the chefs. I'm like, well, then why are you talking about my nipples? Yes, <laughs> you know? I don't think so, honey. Yes, it's just like. You're the one fixated on them. Seconds. I am not. <gasps> and I like to dress the way I like to dress. And by the way, I thought everybody had nipples. <laughs> oh, by the <laughs> way. By the way. Five seconds. Okay, Close I it really out. don't understand that. And I just want to say that I can be a feminist and show my nipples too. And I don't think it's fair that you boys get to show your nipples. And I'm not showing my nipples anyway. And, and I don't <laughs> think so, honey. honey. That's one, one minute. minute. <gasps> And you slut shaming, quote unquote, fan mailers. Unbelievable, and also there. I mean, it's not about the look, but the hat that you wear. But it is about. It the is look. about the look. T- television is a visual yes, medium, yes. and otherwise, Famously. it's a stainless steel kitchen, and most people in coats, chef coats. <laughs> yes, yes. Do you know what I mean? Like I. Dress I like to dress the way I like to dress. Yes, like, yes. They're like, it's not about your clothes. I'm like, that's right. So I can dress how I want. I'm not in the kitchen Egg, cooking. Thank you. But that fascinator was fabulous. I, I was going to say, I was going to compliment the fascinator. Thank you. You that looked was, so chic. That was such a good triumph. Albert did a great job that day. That was a Brandon Maxwell. Brandon Maxwell, um, Gaga's designer. Uh, jumpsuit. Uh-huh. And, you know, we tried everything. We tried Band-Aids. We tried silicone. <laughs> Thanks. Also, Slip. our friend Slip. Dave wants us to tell you it was important to him that we tell you that you were a ponytail that fucking slayed it for him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. thank you. That's it. He says he wants more ponytail. That's a Jane I know, The only moment. thing I could think of was like, oh, I have great hair this season. Yeah. I have like. <laughs> You've been having fun hair. with the hair. Yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend, Jeannie, Jeannie, who is my hairdresser on this show, she also does me, you know, in New York whenever I've read carpet or whatever. She's fantastic. And we just get bored. Yes. <laughs> so we're like, I don't know. Fuck it. Let's, you know. Do you ever do Let's like a do long, it. like all the way to the floor? Yeah. <laughs> Not to the floor, but down. we have no done, waist length. Yeah, we have done like, you're going to see there's a 20s episode, like oh. a flapper episode. Wow. It's a great Balmain dress. Oh. And um, 
a real like Louise Brooks Bob? wig. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's just like, it gets, you know, we've been doing the show for a long time. Like I said, it's like an old marriage. So this woman was like, I know it really affected me. I was honestly like really upset for two days because she said, I'm ashamed to watch the show with my <gasps> teenage oh. daughter. Oh God, but that's here, her fucking and problem. And I was like, I was going to say, no, I really took it personally because it, you know, I have a daughter. So, Ew. and I pride myself on Top Chef being one of the few things you can watch with all your family and I'm just like you know what? are we going over no no no, 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 no. and I just felt like you know I think I've done my share for for the ladies you know as you know far what, as fighting Baba, for the women and being like about. I was like I was so mad I you know I think we also we have such a weird relationship to sexuality and naturalness right yeah. you right. know that we've forgotten We've forgotten that it's it's a normal part of life, but also, but not not that it, not that the conversation should even be about sexuality in that moment because it's not. I watch those. I I've, I've watched episodes where I'm like, oh, Padma looks nice, great, and what about the food? I mean, mm -hmm. it can coexist in this space where right people are not just one thing. We're right. all layered, complicated, multifaceted dimensional human being Multi multitudinous people and the, it's what matt said that speaks more that's her issue and has nothing to do with you and also i'm sorry but there probably is something to do with the fact that like like i'm but when when certain women wear certain things people are outraged and if and taylor swift wears that shit all the time thank you and it yes. is about women yes. of color thank and you. it yes. is about women with certain body types when they wear certain things like yes. when they wear halter tops etc it's a fucking scandal meanwhile literally they're not wearing anything different than a lot of other women yes. so it's like yes. seriously yes. sit and spin and i don't think so honey that woman and she's not setting a good example for her daughter also i think i'm judged much more harshly now than i was when i was younger really? because i have spoken out about women's Ugh. issues it's like you know for certain people i can't be a serious thinker or somebody who you know stands for these things but also likes to look good in a bikini like those <laughs> you know those I mean, can coexist. These can coexist, yeah. and they do coexist, and they will continue they, to coexist. Here they are. Coexisting. Here they are. Oh my god! This, I mean, yeah. this was the episode of all episodes. I had so much fun. And this is so great. I feel like I've, I'm. Oh I, wait, what? We have to ask you. What did you do at Union Square last oh, week? Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes, thank you for asking. I <laughs> I got the biggest sugar rush of my life. I felt like Daffy Duck for the rest of the day. I <laughs> hosted and judged this holiday bake off. Ooh. Kellogg's. Uh -huh. So I go to the Union Square Green Market and I go there like twice a week to gorgeous. buy whatever vegetables and bread and stuff. And I always saw this little Kellogg's logo across mm -hmm. the street by Barnes and Noble. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I actually thought it was like their corporate headquarters. Uh -huh. It's actually a cafe. A oh, that cafe? you can go into and it has like a Wait, big cereal, cereal bar, like 16 handles, like all of that. Wait, that's my dream. And, that's and amazing. And you have Wi-Fi and there are couches. It's like, you know, Central Perk for friends. It's uh, really. A cereal bar. It's really funny. That. Anyway, they, they reached out to me and they asked me to do this. And I was like, yeah, sure. OK. And so these four finalists had to make a dessert using any Kellogg's product a cereal, Love any that. Kellogg cereal in their holiday dessert. Uh, and so I did that just a couple of days ago. And the winning dish was this amazing pear and berry frosted flakes tart. <gasps> and she won because she did this genius thing. First of all, she ground up the, the frosted, um, flakes. frosted flakes and use them in the crust of the tart. Wow. And also like these shortbread star cookies that she used to decorate with powdered sugar. But she also made the cream custard with um, Kellogg's <gasps> frosted flakes soaked in the heavy cream until they Whoa. got super soggy for 20 minutes, then strained it, then used that. So you have cereal milk flavored custard under the fruit Whoa. which is sliced razor thin with nothing but a paring knife she didn't have Did a mandolin. mandolin no wow no mandolin i asked her because uh, i was like these you are you really this? ocd <laughs> <laughs> and it was so beautiful that's amazing beautiful oh you can go on their website artists. if you want to if you have a death wish and want to reproduce this, <laughs> I um, have, oh my God. we have to go to this Kellogg's cafe. I, I think we got to go. I will meet you there on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's set a date. But not Tuesday, Thursday. Not Tuesday, Thursday. No, because the market isn't on Tuesday and Thursday. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm yeah. usually there between 11.30 and 12.30. Love that. We'll buy our preserves, our bread, and then we'll get Oh, my Kellogg's. God. There's such good preserves. They have a chili oh, yeah. jam, which oh. is a hot as fire hell habanero jam. Oh, it I is love spicy. so delicious. Try chili jam on toast with peanut butter. 
you will die. Are you a spicy queen? Do you like spicy? I am spicy? a spicy queen. She wrote a whole book on spicy. I wrote the uh, book well, on yes, it. but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, the spice is no different than hot, hot, hot. No, no, no. I, I like course. it hot. I mean, now I like, like I can't take it as hot because my digestive tract has really taken a beating oh, from sure. thir- from sixteen seasons yeah, with Top I Chef. Would imagine. So I have to be, you know, a little mindful of that. But I still, I love making hot sauces at home. I love making chutneys. I'm a yeah. big condiment girl because if you have good condiments in the fridge. You can just fling a dollop of something anything. in a frying pan, grill some fish or chicken thigh, oh my God. you know, wilt some spinach in the pan juices, and oh my that's God. it. I'm a- I actually am so thrilled that we did not do the grilled cheese thing because I don't want you to judge me making food. It is not up to can your standards. Can I tell you something? What? I don't want to talk about the first lady badly, but... <laughs> Go on! Please. I don't want to I don't want to diss M- Michelle Obama because I love her and worship the ground yes. she walks on, but I <laughs> read the preface of her autobiography Biography, yes, yes. Becoming. And I almost, it was like nails on a chalkboard that I was reading that Michelle Obama microwaved a grilled cheese. <laughs> no! And I was like, no, Michelle, no. no. Your you image. Are <laughs> no, I don't care about her image. Her image is fine, but I was just like, no, girl, let me show you the way. This is, you an, oppor- this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you <laughs> yeah. to just to just strike up a relationship with her where you show her the way. Oh, yeah. I do have to ask, Padma, have you seen this video that's this old clip from Oprah? Speaking of mm-hmm. Oprah, where this woman... <laughs> this yeah. Yes, I posted it. I yes. know what you're talking about. The million dollar chicken. The million chicken. dollar chicken thing. I think it's so funny. I, I used it as a meme. <laughs> it's so good. I, 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 because I would have been, I, I think the same thing so many times in a day. Why I'm didn't like, you season really? this? And really? the thing is, I don't think so, honey. Ah! <laughs> thank God. And we have to end on that now. I think we got to. Oh my God. Padma, thank you so much for being here. Thank the you show for is me. top chef. I mean, you know what? You love it. And you know, Padma, you love Padma. Um, I want you to um, listen to my memoir. I really do. I, I, I mean, I'm going to. And I'm, I will, you said becoming, and actually, I know for a fact that my mother got me becoming for Christmas. That's lovely. That's so I'll, she's I'll, a good writer. I'll read. Becoming. Excellent oh, writer. I would, I would imagine she is. Um. Well. Anyway, we'll close out with the song as we always do. You know we will. Here we go. And on um, theme. Here we go. Got myself a lover. And he's so 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 <laughs> when he me over, I come every time. Yes. And when my sugar daddy takes me for a ride. <laughs> Wherever we go, it's delirium time. Yes! Oh my Bye god! Bitch. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by dog. Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on 